At the end of the Bolivian Altiplano, at an altitude of 3,700 meters, lies the largest salt desert in the world. In this lunar landscape, the Aymara Indians have for centuries exploited the only resource there, salt. A few thousand years ago, when the water disappeared, the salt was concentrated in the bottom of the lake, changing the landscape into a vast expanse of white. The Indians call this place the Salar. Right, I'm going to work in the Salar. I'll be back this afternoon. Herculanu lives with his family in the village of Kolchani. He has worked in the Salar for 20 years. It's a 20 minute journey to another planet. Every day, he cycles to join his team at the salt extraction site. It's essential to be protected against the reflection of the sun on the white crystalline surface. So that the sun doesn't damage our skin, we have to wear hats, glasses and hoods. Otherwise your skin comes off in strips like a potato skin and it never grows back. The Indians were already extracting salt here well before the arrival of the Incas. At an altitude of 3,700 meters, daytime temperatures rarely exceed 17 degrees, but depending on the season, it can go down to well below zero at night. Collecting salt is a punishing job, and it's difficult to make a decent living. Each little mountain represents about 1,200 kilograms of raw salt. To fill a truck, I need 12 little mountains of salt, and that takes one day of work. The salt is then taken back to the village for processing. They start by lighting the dryer. Then, for two hours, the crystals are turned over and worked in order to remove any trace of humidity. Once dry, the salt is ground and packed. We hardly fill 1,000 bags a day, but we don't earn much, just 12 bolivianos for 1,000 bags. We just manage to make ends meet. Living in Kolchani is very hard. Everything is salty, clothes are salty, food is salty, vegetables are salty. How can you live like that? But at the moment, what else can we do? After school, but also on Saturdays and Sundays, the children often come to help their parents. Contrary to popular belief, Salt isn't naturally iodized, despite its origins in the sea. We add iodine to the salt before we grind it and then we mix it. Without iodine, you can get diseases. We add iodine to table salt because it will be used in food and it contains vitamins. For years, the absence of iodine in the salt took a terrible toll on the Aymara population. But in the last 25 years, the average life expectancy on the Altiplano has risen from 44 to 57 years. On the ground in the great white desert, hooded men continue their work. The crust of the Salar is made up of different layers of salt, forming rectilinear strata. There are three types of salt, table salt, common salt, and block salt. Table salt and common salt are reserved for human consumption. Block salt is intended for animals and for house construction. 
We work all year, but in June and July the Salah freezes. There isn't much work, it's very hard. Afterwards, in September and October, we earn more. We get on faster when the salt isn't frozen. Traditionally, the Aymara Indians used salt blocks as bricks when building their baths. In recent years, tourists from all over the world have come to Bolivia to visit the Salar de Uyuni. So to accommodate them, the Indians have built top quality hotels from salt bricks. All the materials used are based on salt, such as the cement they use. A simple mixture of fine salt and salt water. I've worked with salt blocks for 30 years. At the moment, there's a lot of demand. There's a good market. We only use them for building hotels, and that earns us good money. With salt blocks, we can earn 70 or 80 bolivianos per day, 400 or 200 blocks, for 150 blocks. Here, the salt is 1.4 meters thick. That's not very thick. In the middle of the salar, it's six or seven meters thick. Making bricks allows the Indians to earn a better living. As for the natural resource, it seems inexhaustible. Herculano, have you bought the llama fetus that I asked you to get from Pachamama? Yes, my daughter went to buy it. Right, we'll look after that now. To the South American Indians, Pachamama is the mother goddess of all things on Earth. In Bolivia, when the structural work of a building is finished, it's traditional to make an offering to Pachamama in order to protect the work until the construction is completed. We'll bury it here for the almighty goddess of nature and we'll pray. Yes, that's good. During the ritual, a stillborn white llama is decorated with garlands and then buried at the foot of the foundations. Let's pray. Holy Earth Pachamama, this white llama fetus is for you, Pachamama, so that the construction is finished quickly. Like a running llama, we'll finish this construction. Yes, the construction will be finished quickly, thanks to Pachamama. Once a year, in September, before the first rains arrive, the villagers set off in a caravan to fetch holy salt from Fish Island. The salt collected there is of exceptional quality. I go with the llamas as far as Fish Island to fetch salt because it's the best. Since the Incas, our ancestors have always mined the salt on Fish Island. It's a tradition. We'll offer it to the gods of nature and the Salar. To reach Fish Island, 60 kilometers away from the village, the convoy will walk for two days. The coast of Fish Island appears at last. When they arrive on the island, the priority for the men is to let the llamas graze. The llama is important for us. The llama keeps us alive. Sometimes we kill one, which allows us to support our family. It brings in money so we can buy food, rice and everything. The llama is important because every part of its body can be used. Weaving, clothes, blankets, everything can be made with its wool. And we also use its hide. The entire llama is useful. And of course it helps us for transport. It helps us in one way or another. And it's cheaper than a truck when we transport salt. That's why it's our best loved animal. The island is in fact an ancient coral reef it's hard to imagine that today it's almost 4,000 meters above sea level. 
In spite of a particularly hostile climate, vegetation has evolved. Giant cacti flourish everywhere, and they continue to grow at a rate of one millimeter per year. The largest specimens are over 5,000 years old. Since the time of the Incas, the island's salt has been sought out for the whiteness of its crystals, symbolic of purity, by all the shamans of the region. They use it in offerings to Pachamama during religious ceremonies. Once it's ground, this salt is sold for 20 times the price of the village's salt. One by one, the salt blocks are loaded onto the animals. The llama is strong, but it doesn't like carrying very heavy loads. Two blocks each are enough, making 25 kilograms. At the height of the Inca Empire, this salar was permanently mined and caravans of thousands of llamas supplied the whole region with salt. Six hundred years later, the sacred salt is still collected in the traditional way. But these traditions are under threat. Half of the world's lithium reserves, a metal used in manufacturing electric batteries, are concentrated here under the Salar's salty surface. Recently, this timeless desert has aroused the interest of large multinationals. That interest could profoundly change the life of the Indians of the Salar de Uyuni.